And this is not really a video that is intended for the British people. Uh, this is just a video to alert others around the world about the British. Uh, it's a video I would dedicate to King, now it's now King Charles. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, it's a video I will dedicate to the entire British royal family because of this issue here. I found it bizarre for British to publish well, so it's not difficult to see. I mean, King Charles travels to mark the day anniversary. Prince William joins royals at world leaders as he stands in for King Charles the day. A DD King and world leaders attend emotional DD events. Uh, it's all about a King Charles at international D Day. It's a D Day. And things don't change even if you go at any time. Uh, it goes to shows. It's go, it goes to show they were preparing themselves for the D Day. Um, Prince William to step in for King Charles at the D Day that was one week ago. Uh, and then we have here we have a cancer. We have a this is a cream about the creamages as a cancer. And we have a little bit more about a cancer that's a month ago. Funny because it is kind of funny because look, I did go to the website here. And uh, I do, took a few screenshots before I started to record this video. And uh, if you would, without limiting any time to, to Prince Charles, I get 24 hours or, uh, you know, uh, if you just enter Prince Charles, you would click that, you can see that you get uh totally different news this was this this screenshots i took about one well, hour ago you know one hour and a half ago and they it's different look at that thank you for our freedom prince william stands for cancer striking king king charles three very good amid cancer okay this is the news we have seen uh, but this one here, thank you for your freedom now is missing. And I see here, this is from nine hours ago. And I see another one, King Charles travels to mark D-Day anniversary. And that was seven hours ago. And we have another one here, Prince William to step in for King Charles D-Day. And I took some more. Uh, maybe this is the best thing would be to just... Uh, let's see if we have this. Do, 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 do we do? So I don't have to uh, save any of it. So what was it? I mean, let's see this here closer. Prince. Oh, shit. I even run Prince Tahirless. Prince Charles. There you go. The UK King Charles, Prince William and Prince Minister, uh, Prince Harry requested meeting with King Charles. And we have here, we have, what else do we have here? Oh, I entered King Charles. Oh, all right. Let's go here. And what I will do now uh, yeah, we're gonna continue with that. What this is, this is, this is about the really entire brand of the British royals. It re this is no longer intended for the British people, for the for the British public, really.
because it <laughs> I will explain everything. King Charles. There you go. Uh, King Charles travels to Mark did they to them? King Charles at the end of the his father with Harry. Uh, thank you for your freedom, for our freedom. First of you who portrayed Croatia is unveiled three weeks ago. That's changed too. Uh, but then we have, we have below, we still have, look at that. Uh, the did they, the did they, the did the did the did they. But what got my attention is, let me see that. Eh, no worries about it. We shall see now from this picture here, which I took. It will be so much easier to observe this. That will be like really, really a doozy. Let's see what else we have here in a collection. Let's see this here. It's one day, four days ago, four hours ago. Nothing. I, I've i noticed online that British invested an immense amount of uh, commercials into King Charles's future visit on a D-Day to the Normandy that would take place. He had dedicated himself, make, made themselves so clear about, you know, yeah, we will have a king. He's gonna go. Our king is gonna go to the big day. It's gonna be a celebration in Normandy and so on. All right. Yeah. Um. Then I notice a lot of shit about this stuff. That doesn't make any fucking sense to me. And it's time to take British people to stop taking them seriously in respect of the D Day and the World War Two. It's not. It's an insult, if anything. And it's just, I don't know. Um, it, it's enough of it. It's enough of this stuff. First of all, you're going to hear your king, Charlie. He's going to give you a speech I prepared for him. Here is the, the big speech from the, from the king, Charles. Just 14 hours ago, it was released here, and it's, as you can see, Charles giving a speech in which he suggests that during the last 40 years, he was seven times in a Normandy. Oh, my God. That must have been fucking busy politician. I will tell you that Vladimir Putin never missed a single opportunity to appear himself in the Moscow Square. <laughs> he doesn't believe one, but this guy believes it even less. This is full of shit. This is actually a hundred times worse than Putin. This one actually appears at Normandy to divide and conquer World War II pledge to fight Nazis. To stop a Nazi phenomenon. I think this is the most devoted neo-Nazi that I have ever seen in my lifetime. Yeah? You're going to say, how is that, huh? In Normandy. Yes. And meeting so many distinguished veterans. In Normandy. Of attending Over the past 40 years, I have had the great privilege of attending seven D-Day commemorations. Okay. In Normandy. Let's do this again. In number. Over the past 40 years, I have had the great privilege of attending seven D Day commemorations in Normandy. Okay, so within the last 40 years, within the last 40 years, this guy visited seven times. This is totally fucked up, because he was not even a king, as you know. Uh, let's see, since when is this guy a king?
you can see this. Oh, this is since September 2022. So we can say about a year and a half. It's fair to give one over a year and a half. And it's getting closer to two years now. He is being a king. Yeah. So it's pretty fucking sad. I mean, when you're like within 38 years and more as a prince, you have visited seven times Normandy. That's not a whole lot, is it? I mean, other than being fascinating with what went on over there, uh, sca scaffolding around the area to see something special, to play fool over there, stick nose in a sand. Uh, you just made it seven times to the D-Day. That's all there was. And the thing about it is, if you were not born yesterday, you're not 40 years old. This is here, your age 73. That's 75. That's pathetic. You're 75 years old. And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying anywhere that you did not. I'm just saying that within the last 40 years, you made it seven times. That's all there is to it. So as a prince, you made it about six times then. You must have been a busy prince. Going out like almost like seven every seven year. You paid a visit. For this reason, King Charles stated me, he hated D-Day. He hated World War II resistance. He stated me, what about other kings and queens? They did not visit it all. So this was the reason for him. This is how he justified then his visits to Normandy, so that I and others should be pleased that he made seven visits within the last 38 years, 40 years, I should say. So he must have made them more before he became, uh, what, a prince? No. He's prince since long ago, no? So well, why, what is it with the 40 years? Well, you know, 40 years ago, 41 years ago was this. Prince Charles was busy with accepting awards from the neo-Nazi veteran. This one here was in 1983. So if you, if you wonder why was it that he mentioned 40 years, why did he visit only seven times? Like I said, I would have kicked him in the ass. I would not even allow him to attend any kind of Normandy, any kind of D-Day commemoration or anything like this. I don't allow any Nazi bastards to come anywhere <coughs> close to D-Day or something like that. This is not a place for the Nazi shit. This works in the Britain because the British are fine with it, it's, it's their majesty, it's their king, and they're just used to it, because if somebody, you know, mentions, they kill him, they ran him over. That's a special day, just got that bit more special with having you on oh, yeah. the show. I've got to say, oh, yeah. I think the royal performance has been majestic. I think the king's speeches have been pitch perfect. I don't think they could have possibly done a better job. You've been a Royal Observer for a long time. Yep. What's your take? Martin, there is no force. You know, that's why I said don't pay attention anymore to this British stuff because it's ruining the whole world. And the thing is that 
they got used to repeat lie and lie and lie and censor the truth. And they don't censor the truth. They kill the people that tell the truth. And it's important for the world to stand up against this compliance, which British are exercising in uh, in the name of the British royals or, you know, in, in respect and sign of British loyalty to, to their masters. On earth, that could have stopped the king even undergoing cancer <laughs> treatment yeah. from going to Normandy today. And he's done brilliantly, as has uh, Prince William. Yeah, he stresses basically how important was his uh, grandpa who was involved in the D-Day operation. Uh, <clears throat> who had uh, arguments with uh, Winston Churchill for refusing to listen, to stay in Britain. And I don't know, it, it was extremely courageous and he made it all the way to the ship to observe. Poor bastards, many of them British also, dying on the shores of Normandy next to Americans and others who invaded. Hitler, basically. Yeah, that's a courageous act, basically. It's a courageous act to already be on the ship and have a denoter in your hands and, and watch something unprecedented that never took place before in the history. I mean, do you even realize the scale of this invasion? Uh, chances of being hit, the chances of being... If he made it to ship, I, I'm not interested in whatever they have to say about the British royals. I mean, this is bullshit. You know, I would say that he participated. If he would land on shores of Normandy next to the soldiers with a gun in his hands, command, took command, uh, if he was involved in it, something like this. But, you know, that you, you know, this is bizarre, you know. Um... That he participated in a D Day. Uh, it's a bunch of horse shit. There is somebody else, however, who did participate in uh, in assembling neo Nazis big time that did really attribute it tremendously uh, to, you know, when they afterwards they fumed about it. This is a, this is about this to know a here. Leaked a video from Queen Elizabeth's family archive. Yeah, you know this is this, this is this is only in Britain. That's why you shouldn't take this seriously. I mean, it suggests like yeah, actually angry about it. who dared to leak the video about the Queen and Hitler. I mean, who dared? How dare you, Britain, do this? How dare you? Buckingham Palace wants to know who leaked a video from Queen Elizabeth's family archive. Sun, the Sun newspaper obtained a 70-second black-and-white video showing the Queen as a child. It apparently shows her performing a Nazi salute. Charlie Daggett is outside Buckingham Palace in London with how the palace may have helped the video get out. Charlie, good morning. Good morning to you. Palace officials have confirmed to us this morning that an internal investigation is underway to determine the source of the leak, where that family footage came from, and just how it ended up in the hands of the Sun newspaper. It's a grainy home movie shot in 1933. Playing up for the camera, a young Queen Elizabeth is seen apparently raising a Nazi salute alongside her mother and younger sister dancing around. Her uncle, the future King Edward VIII, does the same. Whether an innocent gesture done in jest, the palace is said to be scrambling to figure out how the film got out, says royal correspondent. You know, uh, the thing about this stuff is to me personally, I, I just want to know, these people still did not made it out of this thing here. They still, they're still in the back in time. They're still back with this. They're still stuck here. <laughs> they... They're, they're still stuck in 1933, but this was 1933 and 1933, of course, it was not 1940. But this is one generation, isn't it? I mean, if you look at that stuff, that's bizarre. Uh, that's just the Queen. And then you had the Philip and Queen. And, and that, that's one generation that was involved in the neo-Nazism. You know, 
one generation that was involved in it. So what's going on with these people here? What's happening with this stuff? Well, you're not going to find a single generation of these people that are not involved in this stuff. Still, until 2024, I mean, this is what is bizarre about this stuff. That every generation is just a matter of time when they express admiration, some sort of sympathy with a Hitler, with a Nazi Germany. These people well kept Nazism alive. I mean, if this isn't bizarre... It didn't end. It did not end with a Charles or anything like this. It went on with Prince Harry, with another generation. So the only thing that British can hope for or pray for, that's actually that one day there will be a generation of these British royals they're so proud about, they're, they're advocating them so much, that it's not going to express affiliation or sympathy with the neo-Nazism. Yet it is 2024, so really never is too late, but really... Many are questioning the sensitivity of a 20-year-old prince who chooses to party in a Nazi uniform. It was I mean, one of the biggest mistakes of my life. I felt so ashamed afterwards. All I wanted to do was make it right. I sat down and spoke to the chief rabbi in London. Um, which had a profound impact on me. I went to Berlin and spoke to a Holocaust survivor. I could have just ignored it and got on and probably made the same mistakes over and over again in my life. Really? I learned from that. Really? Are you, are you fucking kidding me? That's why I'm not taking you seriously British anymore about this stuff. That is too much. Uh, really? He could just go on with life and not learn. That's why he did this. He met with the rabbi and with his people so that because he wanted to learn, it was just a mistake. Really? 20 years old? Really? Well, I just happened was around back then. I was in an area back then. I was in an area back then. All the, I, not back then, but... I was in there all the time, as you know, these people. There was no mistake. Prince Harry played with a Nazi uniform for at least six months, and in likely more, eight, maybe even a year. There was no fucking mistake there. He wasn't alone playing with a Nazi costume. Prince William knew about the Nazi costume, and I find it bizarre for Prince Harry to state that it was Prince William's fault for Harry to settle for a Nazi costume, which he stated so he could protect his brother William. And he was 20 years old. He was 20 years old. When was this? 2005? 2005, there you go. Really? So this is 60 years after the World War II. You just make a mistake of your life. I don't think so. I don't think you make any mistakes. I think that you're just one of the generations that keeps a neo-Nazism alive, well, alive, sending a mixed signals about one, just as your grandma did, just as your father did, just as your uncles, just as your everybody did. And you continue to do this, they take a different role, anywhere different pants, different everything. You assume different role, you assume everything different. And you actually fart in the face of those that don't like this even a little bit. Because the interview that you gave is bizarre. This is bizarre. Mistake? 
this is not a mistake. This is a definitely a calculated or calculated decision. It was an act of sabotage, if you like. See, I no longer even see this as a sabotage because of my own case, because of the way this British state is run. It's deliberately cluster fucking entire system, entire order. Deliberately jamming, fucking up the whole system, the whole order, United Nations and absolutely everything, wherever anything can be fucked up. Sending all kinds of mixed, fucked up signals in all directions. Uh, and just creating lie of their own. They're the best at falsifying history, truth. Many are questioning the sensitivity of a 20-year-old prince who chooses to party in a not- First of all, you are 20 years old. You didn't make a mistake, it was not a single mistake. You appeared with a Nazi costume on several occasions. But it was that occasion that they actually took a note of you. There was no mistake, it was calculated, it was well planned ahead. There absolutely was no mistake about it. And it's time for you to come clear about these things. What's a uniform? Plus that you don't make mistakes like this. You didn't make a joke, you didn't make you didn't say something. You had a fucking Nazi uniform, buddy. It takes more than to make a mistake. It takes a whole lot to wear actually a Nazi uniform. You didn't go out there and say a joke or something, some sick shit. You didn't go out there and say, hey, you know, something. You wear literally a Nazi uniform, a real Nazi uniform with a swastika on it. That's not a it was mistake. I mean, one of the biggest mistakes of my life. Mistake would be if I would take you seriously, that would be a serious mistake, just like your father who was busy also in 1983 with some other issues. I felt so ashamed afterwards. You know, guilt, I don't want to talk about that stuff because you're a pathological, pathological liar. I don't think that you can exist without lying 24-7. All I wanted to do was make it right. It's bizarre for you to wear a Nazi uniform, don't you think so? I mean, how, why, how come your father, he visited D-Day, Normandy, and your family was so much involved in it. And, and uh, you know, where do you get this idea to just wear a Nazi uniform? Where do you get this? Because it's not a one-time thing. This is not a small thing. You actually go and you pledge yourself that you will do incident like this. It's deliberately done. You appear yourself enough in public for public to actually take note of it with the cameras. I sat down and spoke to the chief rabbi in London. Um, no, you did not. You did not sit down with anybody. They make you sit down. They also make you go do other stuff that you did not want because you were a violent thug, but that doesn't matter here. What matters is you were not dropped up, you were not, nobody did anything to you. It was simply educated approach you have taken for the sake of Nazism. Which had a profound impact on me. I mean, it did have a profound impact on him, yeah? Mm -hmm. Berlin and spoke to a Holocaust survivor. Yeah, he went on then to speak to a Holocaust survivor. I could have just ignored it and got on and probably made the same mistakes over and over again in my life. He could just go on, you know, he didn't have to do this and uh, repeat the same mistakes in his life, you know, because this is the way it's done. Because, you know, <laughs> you know wearing a Nazi uniform as a prince, as a royal in Britain, it's not a big thing. That's not a big deal, <laughs> right? You go, you're British, you don't mind this, right? You would just allow him to just go and repeat the same mistake, you know. You don't have to apologize. This is just nothing. New. It's not a big deal. But I learned from that. Yeah, he learned from that. A uh, real British horror did. British horror. The point here is that he is not the only one. This horror repeats. And this horror is not 
Uh, this horror is not there by coincidence. This is not something that it would be a, a mistake or, you know, it's not about mistakes. It's about keeping it alive. Sakse kaburg gota. It's about keeping it alive. This is about the mistakes. British are not going to take them accountable. They never did. You know, it's, it's, it's pitiful, this thing. The British see them like, in a best-case scenario, they see them like mentally retarded family, which they are far from it. They see them like an exception to the British uh, democracy and spirit, which is differently minded. It's not weak. It's not so wicked. Uh, it's more straight. And for that matter, they deem that they do enough good for the world so that they can afford to have something like this right at the top of the state. Now, I do have a problem with it because of my own case. And I did spoke about, including about the World War II, about my grandfather, how the medals from here disappeared from our house. Uh, him talking me literally into a Nazism. Talking about the Prince Charles, now King Charles. And turning my life not upside down, but erasing my existence from the world. Like if I, you know, never even existed. Turning my life literally into a courage to appear anywhere in public, to get out and go about life like normal people do. Now, I don't appreciate this type of democracy. I don't think this is constitutional. Uh, there's been people murdered in Britain through the so-called mental act, mental hair care act, uh, for just voicing any kind of concern about these people. And it's now, because of this war in Ukraine, that we have to witness actually stuff like this appearing. I have had the great privilege of attending seven D-Day commemorations in Normandy and meeting so many distinguished veterans. I, I could go on with this stuff here. We could go on with it. Um... The point here is, this is not about a Harry, this is not even about the Queen Elizabeth, uh, this is not about Prince Philip, this is not about Prince Edward, who should have been a king, this is about this people from London anymore, this is about the British as to what exactly they plan with this stuff and you know I, I think the world should take them not I'm going to say with a suspicion but truly with like a spear with reserve to exercise caution when dealing with this stuff you know, maybe we should see British like not completely normal like, not completely okay in their heads. Just, you know, someone, you know, somebody who just, you know, happened so was there somehow. Which is really not just, it's really terrible what I stated right now. I realize that this is terrible because of the veterans that rushed through the Normandy to liberate Europe for the price that Britain actually paid during the World War II. But, You know, this is this is what they have. This is what they this is what they do. This is what they keep alive. This is what they, um, you know, this is what they continue to see themselves in. And this is the stuff that keeps sending crazy signals. Every one of their fucking generations does it, and it's not about to stop it anytime soon. It's no, it's nothing controversial. This shit is not controversial. This is not, this is well planned. This is not a, this is not a, this is not a coincidence. Every generation did it. Every generation does it. And they do, they really, they really make sure that they do it. 
you know they really really make sure that you do understand the message i mean that you get the message they keep it alive they keep neo-nazism they keep one alive they keep it alive they keep reminding they keep appearing giving the symbolic numbers out uh they keep reminding us by the way today the topic that i gave you the two topics that i gave you one is this one here about king charles accepted the word from the nazi veteran as well as the number which i you heard here this is what king charles stated me during mk ultra these are two things he warned me about he warned me about this issue here and he warned me about this issue this guy is a pervert this guy is a sick pervert he saw himself literally through issues that were alarming issues with a lot of people acknowledging one is insane and he's not going to stop short he never stops short he gets the energy wherever he gets the energy it's okay he see himself in things that he's a delusional individual that he truly he had, should not see himself in somebody acknowledging stuff like this or somebody who had drugged up I was drugged up. They always interacted with me as a drugged up on the MK Ultra. But deemed that this is just the same thing as if we would acknowledge, I don't know to whom. You know, why why would you do this kind of stuff? What are you sending a perfect example for your future generations so that you can have on your videos stored about what you did and that you give the promise and you, you know. Me personally, I would kick your ass out of that B day anniversary. I would never allow you to fucking participate there no more. Disallow you for coming anywhere even close to it. Because you're not worth it. You're not worthy of it.